So the next thing we're going to do is uh, there's a program kick drum that I want to try to that we've had muted the whole time. I, I mentioned it very early on when I was going through the programming. It's still in the session. I want to use it as a as a kick drum sample to put with uh, Brian's kick drum. We just need to cut one of them out and treat it as a sample. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, could just make it a mono thing too. Cool. So let's split that into mono. Rid of our right side. Yeah, and go ahead and hide the that guy. Okay. All exactly the same. Yeah, they are. That's fine. You just, just grab one. Yeah. Yep. All right. So this guy. Just make a duplicate of it. So right now we're we're picking a sample. It visually looks like the transient is actually moving down, so he's gonna quickly flip it. And then we're gonna make this sample a tight start and finish, and then we'll take it and put it in slate trigger uh, and trigger it off of the uh, kick drum track. In order to find the spot with the sample, if you're making a sample, you wanna try and get pretty darn close to where the transient starts and then cut it at that point, because if you don't, then you might have a delay when it's triggered, so it'll have uh, phase issues because it'll be hitting slightly later than what you're trying to trigger or the source that you're trying to trigger. So we try to get right up on it. We're gonna make one more playlist just because we're gonna get rid of these other guys. And we're gonna blow this clip up just to make sure that we're not missing any audio on the tail end of it, which it looks like we're not going to go into it and just create a slight crossfade on the end, just a slight crossfade on the beginning as well so that we don't have any issues with pops in the end. And then what we will do is we will consolidate it. Yeah, we're consolidating it so it's its own unique audio file. We're gonna name the file specifically so that we can easily find it when we load it into Trigger. We'll call it KTLO and then we'll call it PROG so that we know it's a programmed kick rather than a live kick sample. And then we'll call it kick. What we can do is just export this to an external folder. We'll export it multiple mono rather than interleave so that we're not making a stereo file out of something that's mono. So since we don't have our sample drive today, I'm gonna put it in the bounces folder make this track inactive and hide it. We're done with it. So now we're gonna go and duplicate the kick drum track. And we're going to keep our active playlist, but not the alternate playlist, so we're not creating a mess. Uh, and then we're taking the automation sends and group assignments off for the time being. And then we're gonna call this kick T-R-G-R, -R, so that we know that that is the kick that was triggering our sample track. Then what we will do is go to our plugin list and look up Steven Slate. Trigger two, we're gonna do mono so that we get a mono sample because we made a mono sample. And that we are going to the correct directory, bounce files, and open that. If we go to our browser now, we shall see that we have our bounces folder and we will just load this KTLO prog kick into trigger. And just to test it, we will play the track and it should be triggering. Seems like it's triggering appropriately. So we're doing this as, as a one-shot sample, so what that means is that it's the same velocity every time, that we're not having it follow the dynamics of how the kick drum was played, because I'm just going to be blending this in as a supplemental sound, and I just kind of want the dynamic of it very consistent. So in order to do that, we just take our dynamics all the way down. Uh, we put our velocity at 100%, and then our range is going to be 127 to 127. That means that it's at the full volume. You could do this in real time, but usually what we do is we just commit the track. So you can do Shift Option C. Usually I like to 
click the selection that I'm going to edit. If you don't do that, and then there's something way off in the distance in your session that you're not even aware of, especially with a track that has samples on it like we do here, it's going to commit it all the way through the other samples, and it'll take a lot longer than you expected because it's going to be rendering a bunch of space. And then we bounce it offline. We're going to do nothing to our source track for now because we will need it. It says insert after last selected track. So that what it means is it's going to create a new track and place it underneath what we're working on right now. So if you go ahead and do that. So the new file has been created and placed in a new track underneath its source. So we're going to now go to the source track and create a new playlist. And then we will call this new playlist kick SMPL for kick sample. And then we will just drag this track right up top. And then we don't need this committed track anymore. So we're just going to get it out of the session. And there you have it. And there you go. And so then now. we will deactivate trigger. Now it comes the fun part where we just spot check everything to make sure that everything is phase accurate. When I'm far from home.